everyone, my name is Courtney. I write under the pen names Lara Paris, and I'm one half of the USA Today bestselling duo Kennedy Fox. And today I'm going to teach you how to make a teaser in Photoshop. I've been talking about doing this for a little while. I posted in a group, one of our marketing groups, to ask them how they would feel about me doing this, if people would find it helpful, and their response was amazing, so here I am. Today I'm going to be using one of my friend's books as inspiration to show you how I kind of brand teasers. You Usually I just make teasers for our Kennedy Fox pin name and I used to make teasers for Lyra Parrish but I haven't published in a long time. Since I started making teasers back in 2013 they have greatly improved and that's all because of practice. I am not a designer. I am not a Photoshop professional, but my goal with this video is to show you that you don't have to be a professional. You don't have to know every little thing in Photoshop to be able to make things that you need for your brand. So we're gonna go ahead and hop on over to Photoshop and get started. So what you're gonna do whenever you create your artboard is you're gonna go to File, New. You're gonna go over here to the right-hand side and you're gonna click Artboard. And then right here where it says Background Content, you're gonna use transparent and I like to use the 2500 by 2500. It's very important that you use this transparent otherwise you're going to have white space on both sides of the teaser image and you do not want that and then you're going to press create. All right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create artboards and what that allows me to do is to have two different screens open at the same time so I can actually see what Dee's cover looks like so I can base my teaser off of the same branding that she has on her cover. I do have permission to kind of use her artwork as far as her branding for her book that releases very soon. I think it actually releases this week. So I'm gonna bring this down to 47% and I'm gonna come over here on the left-hand side and I'm gonna name this Inspiration and that's gonna be where I'm going to place her cover so I can look at it. I'm going to create another artboard and the way to do that is you can either go over here to this and you can right click and you can duplicate here, duplicate the artboard, or you can go up to layer and new and artboard. And I'm gonna name this one teaser. All right, so now we've got both images in view. I'm gonna go back to the inspiration and I'm going to paste her cover there so I can see it. And I pressed enter, there it is, that's the cover. This is a spinoff book from her Illusion series. It can be read as a standalone. You don't have to read the previous books from what I understand. If I'm wrong, D, just comment below and let everybody know. Um, and so next up for the teaser, I'm gonna go ahead and click on it over here on the right hand side. I'm going to put an image that I downloaded from Deposit Photo. Guys, do not use free photographs off of the internet. Please do not do that. You do not want to get in trouble by just downloading any image, celebrities, whatever that you found. Photographers work really hard to get images and that's just absolutely rude. I've seen some shady things on the internet where people have like put their name over watermarks and whatever the case is. Go get a deposit photos account. It's not that expensive and it will save you from being sued. So just a disclaimer, um, we're going to go ahead and put the image on this blank canvas and we're going to file, place embedded, and we are going to use this image right here. If you want to transform this image, it's actually really easy. It's already in transform right now. If you want to keep the correct proportions, all you need to do is press shift and then pull on one of the corners to go ahead and fill the white space. Whoops, a little bit too much. Um, you can change this to where the guy is over here, the girl is over there. You can make it even bigger where just like, you just kind of like see his face and her mouth or whatever the case is. But I kind of like being able to see her reaction with her eyes closed. I think it's very Nicholas Sparks, <laughs> two people almost kissing. And um, I'm gonna leave it about right there where it kind of cuts off her back but we can still see his hand on her thigh. And I'm gonna press enter to place it. Now, as I look at her cover, you can see in the background, there's kind of like this purple wash or whatever the case is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a layer on top of this image. I'm gonna create a new layer over here on the right-hand side. It's that little page. And then I'm gonna go over here to the left and I am going to get the paint bucket. I'm gonna go down here to the color and I'm gonna actually steal this color 
that is in the back of her cover. And so I've got it matched pretty good. It's kind of close. And I'm going to press OK. And then I'm going to put the paint bucket over the image. Now what this is going to do is it's going to give it kind of like the same look as this background because I'm going to change the opacity down to about 55%. And now I am going to work on the text. Found a text that's very close. So what I'm going to do is kind of build this branding that we have on the front cover to also put on our teaser. So I'm going to get this color that is color of her font that is really close. And now I'm going to put the text down here and it was called Moonstone. Very close. I, it's not exactly the same, but like the I and the the I and T and stuff kind of look the same. So that's what I'm using. So we've got the title and I'm just going to move this up a little bit. And now we're going to build the an illusion series novel. Like I said, guys, I don't know what the exact fonts are for these. I just find stuff that's kind of close. It was this one. So A and then I'm going to do novel as well. Because if you look on the cover, like if we zoom in right here, the way that the Anne novel, it kind of looks like the same font. I don't think it is because of the N is a little different, but we're good enough. This is actually supposed to be Anne. Okay, and so now we just need to find a Illusion Series font to put here. It's not ever going to be exact unless you have talked to your cover designer and you've gotten the exact fonts. That's something that we usually ask for because I do make our teasers and I do like it to match completely, but just for posterity's sake, we're going with this because I don't know what her fonts are. So I actually didn't need to make this a little bit larger. So I'm gonna double click the T and I'm gonna bring this out so I can see the entire words that we've got going here. Um, Actually hers is kind of, let's look for a different font. Oh, that kind of looks like it. Let's see. It looks like she's got that in, it looks like she kind of has it in capitalized letters and that looks good to me. It's kind of close. It's not exactly the same, but we're going to go with it. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to kind of build this and y'all are probably like, what the heck are you doing? We're going to want to make this just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to command T, make this a little bit bigger where it kind of looks like it does on her cover right there. I know this is giant. Just bear with me for one second. And so I'm going to highlight all the layers that I've got up here that are just way too big. And I'm going to command T and then I'm going to press shift so we can transform it and keep its proportions. I'm actually going to make this a little smaller and now I'm going to move things out. So move that down. We're going to move novel over. And the reason why I like to do it that way is then I kind of keep things proportionate. It looks good to me. So um, actually, I'm going to make it just a tad smaller. All right. So we're going to move that down here. I'm going to move novel over just a tad. I'm going to select Anne and a novel, just those two, and then I'm going to transform them and make them a little smaller. So then it's kind of the same as it is on the cover. Enter to use that and move this over. I'm pressing shift and the arrow key to do that. And that looks good to me. It kind of looks like what's actually on the cover. So I'm going to move this down here. And now her name, I know for a fact what font that is because I've used it before. It's called a love of thunder. And so I'm going to go ahead and select that D Kelly. I'm going to choose the color that's actually her name is, which is really close to that. Kind of looks like that to me, actually. I'm going to go over here to the right. It's underneath your properties and we're going to space this out a tad because it looks like her name is spaced. Let's look at it at 100. At about 100, I would say. And now we're going to command T this and we're going to bring it down to size. We're going to put it right underneath here, center it, bring it down just a little bit more. So then it's like, bam, not in your face, but it's still there. There we go. Okay, so we've got this. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a folder over here. And I'm going to name this series author name. And now I'm going to throw all of these layers into there. So then it's not a giant mess whenever I actually add the teaser line. So we've got that you can collapse it. If I wanted to move this around, all you'd have to do is select all the layers that are in that folder. And you can use your arrow keys to tweak it, move it wherever you want, etc. Now I know that you might be thinking, Oh my gosh, it's kind of hard to read the title. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add another layer. I'm going to go over here to the left hand side and I'm going to get a gradient 
going but I'm gonna use black and now I'm gonna put a gradient on this bottom to really make this pop so all you do is you drag up and I'm gonna go to the top of the text and I'm gonna let go you see how that made everything pop like I'm such a nerd for gradients. That looks really great. It kind of matches the cover. At a first glance, you would think, yeah, that's like the same exact branding. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add the teaser line to this. I'm actually gonna create another folder and I'm gonna name it teaser line. Everything I create is going to be in there so I don't get it mixed up. Okay, so since we know that we've got a font that is really close to the title, I'm gonna use that to basically make specific words inside of the one line pop, and I'm actually gonna use the same color that the title is. All the other words, I'm basically going to keep them white and use them in a sans serif font, which means like a straight font. So kind of like the font that we used for novel down below. I'm actually gonna use this um, gothic and I'm gonna do it in capitalized letters. Do you know? Guys, Shell taught me this really awesome trick. And so like, if I wanted to make this white, which I will, you can click this little box over here on the left-hand side and it makes it black and white. And then you can click this box right here and it makes it white. I just learned that. Like I said, I am not a Photoshop professional. So people randomly message me and school me, which is totally fine. And some of those tricks I use and others I just completely ignore because you can teach an old dog new tricks but sometimes you can't teach me so just kidding I love learning new things in Photoshop so if you have something that's really easy to learn other than the selection tool to delete things hit me up and let me know and I've seen people just throw teasers up like this and there's nothing wrong with that but to me it's boring that's why I like to add some pizzazz to it okay so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add the teaser line and I am going to break it up because I like to use different fonts throughout the teaser to make it really stand out and I've learned that it's kind of hard to do that with one text box so I just create each line so I can easily easily move it around how I want. Point. Actually, I'm going to make this a six point and that's going to be one line. And then this one is going to be in the one that's like the cover because branding. And then we're going back to the sans serif font, the straight one. And I hate this question mark. And sometimes these fonts have the dumbest question marks and like periods and stuff. So I just kind of like find another font that has a question mark that I like. This one looks good. And I know you're like, oh, that looks horrible. But we are gonna fix this baby up. And wanted, we're gonna actually make purple, which is gonna be the same purple. And then you, and now we're gonna command T and we're gonna make this a lot bigger. So it looks like it's the same size as the text that we currently have. You can look at wanted and we know wanted is 9.7 by up here. We could actually make it 10. So then it's like an even number. Got slight OCD guys. So we're gonna make this 10 as well. So then we know those two fonts are exactly the same size. All right, now I'm going to arrange this where it kind of has like a cool feel to it. And this is where I just will tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak. And there's no, like, I don't know what's going to look good. I just kind of move stuff around until it's to my satisfaction. Look, again, it needs to be all capitalized like the rest of it. Or it's not going to look right. Obviously, it's not completely on the teaser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the lines. I'm going to Command T and I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to bring it in actually a little bit more. Now, as I'm looking at this, I realize that this bottom part down here is just a little bit too big. Like it's kind of like taking my attention away. So I'm going to select all those and Command T it as well and bring it down just a tad so it's there. People know what the teaser is from, but it's not like in your face, like ready to punch you out. And now I'm going to open up my teaser line folder and select all of those layers of text. And now I'm going to move this around. I'm going to make it just a tad bigger. Like to me, that looks pretty good. The only thing is it's kind of hard to read some of this text. 
So what I'm gonna do is I am going to add a drop shadow behind it, which will kind of make it pop. I know some designers think drop shadow is totally cheesy and I know sometimes that it is, but for teasers, I really like using it because it's easier than creating another layer and putting it behind it and doing all that, which you can do, but to me, drop shadow is fine and it totally makes it pop. If you didn't like the way that this was arranged, it's actually pretty easy to like move things around. So you could just completely play with it. Like if you wanted to do it like this, you can just, what I like about this is you can look at it and like the thing that is, that sticks out to me is that it says wanted you with the letters that are in cursive. And I'm like, oh, that's creative check it out. I am going to move all of this down here. I'm going to make it just a tad bigger. So then it's kind of like the same width as the line above. And then I'm going to select everything and center it and make it a little smaller. So then it doesn't take away the image that I've chosen because it's a love story, guys. And this photo just screams love. Now, if I wanted to, what I could do here is I could actually make this purple layer a little bit darker and um, then it kind of makes the text pop more. I mean, I like that, that's great. And so just a pro tip, if I create a teaser that I really, really like and I love the branding and I wanna use this for my book, to make it super easy, what I do is I leave this the same and I'll save it obviously, but then I'll build upon it. So for example, if I wanted to make another teaser, I would just go down here to the teasers, I would create another layer, I would file, place embedded, and I would choose this picture right here, and I would shift to transform it and keep the right proportions. And then what I would do is I would put them in the view that's like a really cute crop, and then I would just change the words right here for my teaser. I think one sentence is enough for a teaser. Nobody wants to read a paragraph. <laughs> Back in the day when I made Lyra teasers, some of them were just horrendous. I put like an entire four paragraphs on a teaser and don't do that. One line is enough to get somebody's attention. When they're scrolling, they'll read one line. They will not read a paragraph. They will not read five sentences or 10 sentences or 20 sentences. What you wanna do is grab their attention quickly, have them read your teaser line and be like, wow, that like sounds good. Like that really like captured me. Like what is this book about? And then they learn more. Um, any more than that and you're just kind of, to me, wasting your time. That's why we keep our teasers to one line. It's a one-liner, it's the, five seconds that you have to hook somebody. And so anyway, that's what I would do. I would change all this text right here and then voila, you have teaser two. And you could just build all of your teasers this way, just adding more images and changing the text. And then you know that across the board, all of your teasers are gonna be exactly the same. They're gonna be branded to your cover and they're all gonna look really great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna file, save as, and we're gonna call this D Kelly Teaser 2. I'm gonna delete this inspiration artboard off of here. And now I am going to export it as a JPEG. So file, save as JPEG and maximum. And there we go, we've got a teaser. I did make another one. Actually, I recorded this video and my computer died and I lost it. So this is my second time doing this. But the first time I did it, this is what it actually looked like. And that just shows you that you can get different things out of when you look at something. So right here, the text builds to a bigger. I actually use some different text on here, but it kind of looks the same. And that's what I mean about branding. It's so important to me, I feel, to brand the teasers. I don't want 50 different types of teasers used for one book. I want someone to scroll and go, oh, I need to stop. That is a teaser for Interlude, or that is a teaser for Kennedy Fox's new book. Like, I need to stop and read this. And that's what my goal is. As I said before, guys, I am not a Photoshop professional. I have been using it for a little while, but the things that I know are just the things that I need to know. I am not a pro. My goal with this video series is to teach you all that Photoshop can be intimidating, but whenever you break it down to the most basic levels, it's just like Canva. It's just like PicMonkey. It's just, you have to practice a little bit more. I will do a teaser in Canva because there's a lot of you that do use that, but download Photoshop, guys. Try it out. Try these really simple methods to start making your teasers. And remember, the more that you practice, the better that you become at making teasers. 
I didn't come out of the gate making teasers like that. I will show y'all some of the horrible teasers that I've created over the years. And they randomly show up in my Facebook timeline as a memory and I will share them, but they're horrible. So learn from my mistakes, please. <laughs> Spare everybody. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. I just want to say I appreciate you for being here. I hope you have an awesome week. You accomplish everything that you want to and that you keep on writing. Thanks so much, y'all. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!